All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and this is the first of several videos. I don't know how many I'm going to do comparing, contrasting, and taking a general look at the Behringer X32 versus the Midas M32. Um, I'm going to dive into the two consoles. We're, um, you know, there's a lot. I love um, looking at... Um, dispelling rumors and testing things out and seeing if they're true. And there's a lot of chatter out there about the differences between the consoles. Uh, I want to find out what's real and what's not. And also, uh, I have a personal interest in it in that um, people are touring, uh, coming through a lot of the festivals and shows that we do as a sound company, Rat Sound, with M32s primarily, but X32s as well. And um, we've run into some challenges with um, Cat5 lengths, the length of Cat5e or um, Cat grade cable that's run. Uh, typically, our snakes, front of house snakes, are 100 meters, and that works with a lot of the digital formats. And um, sometimes uh, we're running into issues where uh, the M32 to the stage box is uh, having trouble communicating. And same thing with the X32. So I'm going to use these tests to find the cables that work best and uh, what the maximum lengths I can run them. And um, we'll implement that into our front of house snake so that uh, Rat Sound is able to supply cables that we know work at 100 meters if we're all successful, um, which I believe I will be. And um, also try and discern what the issues are, what the challenges are with some of the um, other cables that don't work over 80 meters or shorter lengths. Um, cool. This is a brand new X32 I bought for the adventure here. And a friend of mine, Angel, is going to loan me an M32. I'll get next week and um, we'll start, we'll look at that and start plugging them into each other. Um, let's see. Uh, one of the rumors I heard was that the one of the differences between the M32 and X32 is the connectors on the back. That the M32 utilizes Neutrik connectors on all the XLRs throughout, and the X32 does not. And um, yes, I was able to confirm that. Uh, there are Neutrik connectors on the four pin lamp connector and on the Ethercons on the X32. But all of the XLRs across um, are not. They are, um, uh, they have a logo that looks similar to a Neutrik, but it's not a Neutrik connector. And you can tell that by the metal tab doesn't have the Neutrik N on it. Um, so there's one little difference um, that may, definitely has an impact on the cost differentials. Um, the Neutriks do cost more. And I know this because uh, Sound Tools uses all Neutrik connectors. We're one of the largest purchasers of Neutrik in North America for the Sound Tools products. And um, yeah, we use them and we really like them. Okay, so let's get started. What I've got here is the X32, of course. I've got another small Behringer. Why not compare a Behringer to a Behringer? Uh, I've got a little Behringer Xenix, uh, X-E-N-Y-X-Q-1204. Um, it's a little six input or so mixer. Um, I've got this wonderful Fluke tone generator synthesizer here. And um, it's very accurate. I can precision click and um, set various levels and tones. I've got it set at 500 hertz right now. And then I've got this beautiful Duro um, meter. I'll take this camera back and look at the uh, Fluke. There's the Fluke. There's the Behringer. And there's the X32. And there is the Duro meter. Now this Duro meter is absolutely wonderful. It's got um, a very wide range and there's an LED for every single dB all the way up, and I can't read it right now. Let's see what it says. It goes from minus 25 to plus 14 in 1 dB LED increments. And I've got a rotary switch here which adjusts the input level in 1 dB increments, and everything's accurate and precise. Um, 
and then a level switch. So it'll go from plus 20 to minus 40. Let's go ahead and start. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to send this 500 hertz tone. I've got it set with the gain knob on the X32 and I've got the gain set at zero dB, plus minus zero um, unity or whatever that is. And I've got the output of the tone generator set at 1.3 volts, kind of an arbitrary voltage. But um, now I will bring the fader up. Let's do it here. And I'll bring the fader up to exactly zero dB. And the test that we're going to be doing today is we're going to look at, we're going to dispel or address um, the concept that the X32 has a lower output than an analog console and also look at where unity gain is and where the metering is on an X32 versus an analog console for reference point. What are the maximum output levels and um, what is the metering for unity? So now I've set the fader at zero. I've got the gain at zero. It's bus directly to left and right, at which point I'll also set the fader exactly at zero. And I'm not gonna do this with a scope today to keep things simple. We'll just do this off of the clip lights. Um, very gently, I'll try and get this exactly to zero. There we go. Now the fader is reading exactly zero. So now we're zero on the in, zero on the fader, zero on the out, unity gain all the way through. And we are looking at our Duro's meter here, which is set in the one degree increment, right at zero. And the meter is reading plus four. So um, <clears throat> unity gain all the way through has got a plus four dB out. I won't get into all those dB explanations because they confuse me as well. But what I will talk about is let's look at the metering. So with the gain at zero dB, the meter is at minus 18. So that's at minus 18 dB FS or whatever, which is the unity gain for the digital console. You read about so minus 18 on the meter and the fader's at zero, goes all the way to the main out and it goes up here and it's at minus 21. Uh, why that is, I don't know, but um, that's just the way it is at this point. And I'll have to look into that later. Um, so, 0 dB all the way through, it shows minus 21 on the out, and it shows plus 4 dB. Now let's go ahead and use this baseline and look at the analog console. So that's showing up on this other meter here. And what I will do is I will set the fader visually, since I don't have a digital readout, exactly as close as I can get it, approximate, exactly approximately at 0. And I will set the output fader exactly approximately at 0. And then I will bring the gain up until it is exactly approximately the same as the um, X32. So I'll get this up to plus 4 dB. So now the digital console and the analog console have are set with their faders at zero, the output fader, input faders are zero, and the gain knobs are set to zero dB on the digital console, and it's, I don't have a perfect precision, so we'll set it where it calibrates to it. So here's something interesting. With these two boards calibrated together, and such the output is identical on both consoles, the fader, I mean the meter, on the analog console is reading minus seven. So the minus, and the output, on the digital consoles reading minus 21. So we have an offset there that's uh, interesting. Let's go ahead and do something a little different here. Let's bring the output of the digital console up to this minus 18. Oh, so it was just one click. So it probably was there on the digital console. I've just barely touched it and it's at minus 18. And now we're reading plus four still. So the digital console was at minus 18, it's correct. Uh, we we're just a metering, so it's slightly off which corresponds to minus seven on the analog console. Um, let's take the analog console. I'm going to bring the gain up on the analog console until it gets up to zero on the meter. 
So now the analog console is zero, and the digital console is at minus 18, which is its digital zero, which is at minus 18 dBFS. And now let's look at the output differential. The analog console is putting out plus 10, and the digital console is putting out plus 4. So with bulls at their nominal metering, there's 6 dB more output on this little Behringer digital analog console. Um, fair enough. Um, so if we were mixing and doing everything by the book and mixing on the digital console so that we were running right around that minus 18 mark and maybe peeking over it a little bit and doing the same thing on the analog console, you would have 6 dB more output on this analog console. That's a considerable level. It's um, uh, four times the power out um, and a noticeable level difference. But let's find out where these things clip. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the analog console all the way up until I see the clip light. And we'll do, I'll do this on the scope later if this is incongruent with um, uh, the clip lights off or whatever. So I get the clip light just barely lit on the analog console. And I'm going to do the same thing using faders, just like I did with the analog console on the digital console. And I'm going to bring this up to its clip, which is right there. Cool. And <clears throat> now our meters are pegged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the level of the meter down until one of these gets down to zero. Oh, I'll go to, I set the meter at plus 20. So the meter set at plus 20, um, the digital console is showing plus one. So I'm seeing about a maximum output on the digital console at plus 21. And on the analog console, I'm seeing plus five in addition to the plus 20. So I'm seeing a maximum output of about plus 25. Um, so plus 21, plus 25, that's saying that all things being equal, pushing both consoles to clip, this little analog console has got 4 dB more output before it clips than the digital console. Um, based on the clip lights alone. So this is the visual, and using the clip lights alone is important because this is what you're mixing to, this is the visual aspect. And this is a cheap little console, but it's got four more outputs, but this is also a, this is a cheap big console. So uh, just kind of uh, apples to apples here, or I don't know, apples to oranges. Um, cool. So let's summarize really quick the... Um, Zero dB point on an analog console corresponds to the minus 18 part of the meter metering on the digital console. Those do line up. When those are lined up, the X32 puts out 6 dB less output than the analog console. So it's lower. So you'd actually have to push this 6 dB harder, which means you're going to run, run if you want to run it the same as analog console, uh, or you're switching over, you're going to run this at minus 12 and you'd run this around zero. Then when you get all the way up to where you're clipping, this X32 is gonna clip 4 dB before the Behringer, at least by the clip lights, there's gonna be 4 dB less output on the Behringer than there will be on the, this Behringer, uh, Behringer Digital than there will be on this Behringer Analog. Um, so output's a little soft, not um, the end of the world, but also something to know and could be useful. Um, when switching over. Uh, what I would probably do if I was switching from an analog console or if I was uh, used to mixing on an analog console or just um, implementing uh, this X32, I would add four to six dB gain stage following this console somewhere else down the line to make up gain so that if I added six dB, that means this minus 18 point would correspond to the zero point that I'm useful, used to, and everything would line up. Um, if there's negative ramifications from noise floors and stuff, maybe I'll look into that, but um, there's a starting point and the first of several videos. Uh, just a heads up, other videos I'm gonna do on this. Um, Visual differentials, uh, you know, like the Neutrix connector versus the non-Neutrix or off-brand, anything I can see that's um, different. 
Um, preamp overload. I'm going to see where the preamps overload on an M32 versus an X32. I'm going to listen to and make it so we can all hear over the video the sound of the digital overload of those pre analog overload of those preamps. Um, are the Midas preamps different? How different do they sound than the non Midas preamps on the X32? Um, do they have more headroom on one versus the other? Um, I'm going to try nulling. I'm going to try taking the same signal and running it into two channels, turning it up and get that null in order to hear that preamp. But I'm also going to try it between the two consoles. So I'll run the same signal into an X32 and an M32, polarity reverse one, sum them together, maybe on an analog console, and we'll listen to an X32 nulling itself, an M32 nulling itself, and an X32 versus an M32 knowing each other so we can hear the differences or any differences that occur. Uh, we can try that down channel too. We can try like channel one knowing channel 32 to see if there's differentials um, to regard, regarding where uh, you're plugged into the board. Um, cable length, like I talked about, I'm going to look at cable length. I'll get 100 meter cables of various types, see which ones work, which ones don't. And then some extensions, maybe a 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50 meter extensions and then I'll apply those same extensions to multiple cables and we'll find out where those various cables stop working and see which ones give us the most uh, length or which, one, you know, it help us weed out the weak ones there. Uh, what else? I'll talk about cable, what those possible issues are. I've heard all kinds of um, information regarding what, whether they need to be shielded or not shielded. The shells need to be shielded, not shielded. Um, PVC versus polyurethane cable versus rubber cable, static electricity concerns. Um, and finally, uh, summing buses. I want to look at summing buses. I want to take the same signal and run it into multiple channels and sum them together. And then uh, maybe a single channel and um, take those two things know those apart and see if there's any math errors with the summing buses and if there is um, on either console if they're the same or different all right super nerdy stuff um, also let me know other tests you want me to do i've got some great responses so far and i'll try and cover it cool cool